Ladies and germs, this is your old pal CHH. We are back here again today to break bread. Actually, we're not breaking bread, but we we may break bread one day again. I know people have asked for another breaking bread, uh, but that's another day. We've got, once again, Garrett from Born to be Red. He's joining us tonight to show us a ton of cool stuff, maybe. <laughs> we'll see. we got a lot of stuff to talk about, though. Garrett, how are you? Yeah, doing? man. Good, dude. How are you doing, man? Thank you for having me back. Uh, I know people really liked the last video we did talking about Dawn of the Dead and the physical media releases and stuff. So, Oh, I, I don't think they did like it. <laughs> Well, I think that a lot of people watched it. How's that? A lot of people, a lot of people watched it. So uh, that that was a good thing. Um, as far as if they liked it, I don't know because you know I don't know. I definitely did show off the 4K that is currently available from Second Sight. I don't know if people got that far into the video, but a lot of people in the comments were asking about that release. But I did end up showcasing that towards the end of the video. But uh, a lot of people watched it, which is cool. So obviously, it drummed up some interest, which is cool. Yeah, you know, really quick on that, you know, because I. When I we did that video, I went online. It's called, I think you go to dawn45.com. And I was like, you know what? I want to go see Dawn of the Dead in the theaters because some of my friends are going to see it this weekend. Mm. And it's playing in Dallas. That's a three and a half hour ride. I tried to talk to Sydney about take me taking off because I got to work this weekend. I work every other weekend on my swing shift. I was like, Sydney, let me take off work Saturday. Let's go to Dallas and see it. And she's like, Christian, stop. Just don't. We got to go to Texas Frightmare early next month. Just calm down. And so I bought the Dawn of the Dead 45 anniversary shirt on Fright Rex just so I could celebrate somehow, you know, because sure. I got to see this movie in the theater. I wish I could. I implore anybody that can go, please do, because if Rubenstein is really a rat son of a bitch, go see the damn thing at the theater. That way he'll he'll let us get an american american people american us of a <laughs> release there was a there was an american flag on the thumbnail god yeah. damn i but mean I, I totally forgot that it was this weekend and i haven't even checked to see if it is playing near me which would be great because i'm actually off this weekend so if it is that would that'll definitely be something i'll try to hit up yeah let me make sure dawn45.com and then you go to us showings and then you click Actually, it'll, it'll just show you everywhere in the U.S. it's playing. Hmm, let me so, uh, yeah, go ahead and look it up. Like I said, like I'll, I'll read out some of the states to the people that way. Listen, Arizona, California, there's a ton of them in Cali, St. Barbara, Santa Barbara, Colorado's got three showings, Connecticut, one, the District of Columbia's got two. Ooh, I have one in Providence. Is the that Columbus a, Theater? I don't even know where that is, man. That's where they set sail, I guess. Nebraska, New Jersey, Asbury Park. That's be cool. See it in Asbury Park. And that's where uh, Springsteen's from. But yeah, I'm excited for everybody. I hope everybody goes and, and sees the movie. I really do because I think we're at the cusp of something. This is cool that it's showing. Mm. Um, I just wish it would be like a... It's really not, it's really not, if you look at the theaters, a lot of it is, is boutique theaters, right? It's drive-ins, it's, it's, uh, look, Alamo Monroe, Draft House and stuff, yeah. Of course they're playing it, okay, so the Cinemark Mall in Monroeville is playing it at mm -hmm. Cinemark, but it's not a Cinemark thing. If it was, I'd be able to go see it. But everybody, if you can, please go support it. I, I mean, really, I, I wish I could, I really do, but I, I can't, I can't. Uh, but I got funny enough. I got to go to Dallas in, in May to go to Texas Frightmare. So, uh, yeah, guys, and listen, I'm just being silly. I 10,000 views. I don't know what, what happened, but I was telling Garrett, <laughs> I was like, dude, why it's, it's crazy. Everybody's watching this video. And, um, I know, I know a lot of people really enjoyed it. So thank you guys for watching this. We're going to see if we can strike oil on this. <laughs> you know, Garrett, this is actually not a video. I just pulled out of my ass. I mean, there's a lot of trick or treat news. You know, they, there's it? there's a trick or treat too, mm -hmm. and they said uh, for a while, yeah, yeah. They said uh, Winona Ryder's supposed to be in it, I think. Really? Yeah, I haven't heard like, any of this. Yeah, that's what I heard. Um, right. Apparently, they tried to do a trick or treat two years ago, mm -hmm. and he came out. The director, I forget his name, uh, not Fred Decker. It's uh, uh Doherty. Doherty. Yeah. He came out and he's like, "Yeah, we're gonna do it too," right? And then it just he got busy doing other things, and then boom. But they had like a event thing where they premiered like a poster for it or something. Mm -hmm. And uh, finally it's happening because, you know, it, it's crazy about trick or trick 
trick or treat, which is the whole funny thing about this. But really quick, <laughs> you know, what's crazy is, you know, this movie didn't come out. Then it did. Right. They snuck it out mm-hmm. on home video because Warner Brothers was like, oh, shit, this is an anthology film. Nobody makes these anymore. How can we how can we put this thing out? Oh, let's just mm-hmm. not, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's actually really funny. Um, I don't know where you were when all this came out, but this was a huge deal for me, the trick or treat. Um, I remember seeing the trailer at the beginning of a movie in the theater. I don't know which one it was. Halloween 2, Rob Zombie. Rob Z- okay, so then that makes sense. Okay, because I, I saw Rob Zombie's Halloween 2 at midnight the night before. The way they used to do it around here, I don't remember if it was like that for you, but like Thursdays at midnight would always be the first showing, always. So They don't do that of- anymore, do they? They yeah, do like no. seven. Yeah, so it was. It always was an event because you figure the diehards were the ones that were like waiting till midnight to check this thing out. So there would always be a line of like pure horror fans, like everybody was going nuts. And um, I remember we sat in the front row at Rob Zombie Halloween Two because it was just so packed. And um, I saw the trailer for Trick or Treat, and I said to my brother, I was like, "That looks awesome, man! That looks so cool." Anthology takes place on Halloween. I can't wait. And then all of a sudden it just like vanished because I was like, it's supposed to come out in October. What's going on? Where is it? And then, you know, doing some research online, it was kind of just getting pushed back. It was losing the the distribution rights or whatever. And it just kind of vanished for such a long time. And then I remember it, you know, following it a little bit and the home video was released, the Blu-ray, which I bought uh, day one. And what was interesting about that first Blu-ray that I, that I bought now, I hadn't seen it up at that point. I was so excited. I had people over you know to watch this like friends that were like it's finally here blah blah blah. and um i remember taking the slip cover off and it had sam's face underneath without the mask as the as the picture on the 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 blu-ray without the slip on it and i'm like what the hell because it kind of spoiled it a little bit for you like because you were kind of i didn't know what he looked like underneath that mask right but when you but i don't know what edition that was i don't have it anymore i had i had sold it but it was like the it had to win the first edition that came out. It had a slip cover with like the movie poster on it. As soon as you took that slip cover off, it was like his pumpkin face without the mask on was like mm-hmm. front and center. Do you yeah. remember that? Yeah, I, I I used to see it all the time. Sometimes without the slip cover at Fye because man, they this movie kept selling. It was like Halloween. It just kept mm. selling, and they would reissue it. Then they would dump more of them out and put different cardboard on it. And they'd sell mm-hmm. more of them. Then they put out a steel book of like it was nonstop. The yeah. trick or treat releases. I, I the first time I bought it was at a Big Lots in 2010 on DVD. Uh, just the DVD release of it, you know, because I think the DVD mm-hmm. came out in oh the movie was made in like oh seven, right? That's what I yeah. think. So and the then home video release. It was at least when Blu-ray was out because that's when I that's how I bought it. Yeah. So it had to have been what oh nine. Yeah, oh nine is the, I, my DVD is floating around here somewhere. But yeah, it was. I think it was oh nine. The Blu-ray might have come out a year later, or the same year. But yeah, it was definitely, definitely the same time because if not, I would have bought the DVD right away because I knew I bought it the day one. So I think they came out simultaneously. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. So so you watch Trick or Treat, and we're obviously I. I we're going to, we're not going in, in a timeline order with this, but you know, cause a lot of stuff to break down with trick or treat that I want to talk about, but you see trick or treat for the first time you see, is it a party you have? You watch it yeah. with a bunch of your friends. I brought all my friends over and we all watched it together and uh, we all loved it. We uh, fell in love with it. How many times have you seen something where they pull the mask off and it's actually better than the mask? Yeah, I mean, not many. I mean, I think like something like Jason was always really effective in some of those in some of those movies. I felt like, um, like I said, one of my nightmares as a kid was that freaking when he took that mask off in part three and was up in that window. I was like, holy shit, you know, it's crazy. Um, But yeah, it was it was a good reveal uh, with him. And I, I fell in love with the movie. And I remember I ended up buying like. I still have it the sideshow like sam doll and all this other stuff where you could take the mask off the the sack off and he had the pumpkin head underneath so you could display him either way i have like this huge hardcover book that came out for the movie that had all this like special stuff inside like i was just i was really all in uh with trick-or-treat when it first was released like i was like really hardcore into it um but if but let me know about your uh story with it before i get into like what i think of it now uh, I remember the image of Sam before seeing the movie, and I can't remember exactly where I saw the image of Sam, uh, but I was keenly aware of it on a visual sense and kept seeing it pop up. 
because I feel like there were a couple wins of this movie, and this was the first wind of it where it was not too long after the movie came out on home video and I kept hearing about it. And so finally I found, I wasn't looking for it, but I, cause again, and we talked about this on the twilight time video we did. Um, at that point in time, I wasn't aware of release dates. I wasn't aware of when stuff came out. I, I blissfully would just go out of the, go out in the world and just check DVD shelves. And I never knew what was going to be there one day. So mm -hmm. I did find it. And I, I liked it a lot. But see, what, what made me laugh so hard, and I could not, me and my brother were just in tears. We couldn't take the movie seriously because we love Bad Santa so I much. So yeah. I said, is that Thurman Merman? Yeah, dude. <laughs> I was a big Bad Santa fan, too. Like, I saw that in theaters, and I was like, this movie is fucking amazing. And that's and that's the thing. You saw him in the movie, and you're like, oh, that's cool. He's got more work, and it's a horror movie. But then He's got more out, work. Like, it's, it's still Thurman Merman, like, <laughs> you know? <laughs> you know thurman you know it's, i have a love-hate relationship with thurman because some it depends on my mood some days when i watch bad santa i take i take uh uh what's his face aside like jesus christ get are you effing with me like when he gets so mad oh, at me. other days i say come on be be lighten up on old thurman it depends on what day i'm watching it that oh. i'll side with bad santa is is freaking great oh, it's like great. like it like you think about like you know you i was one of those movies where i forget about for a little bit and then i think about it i'm like i had so much fun with that like what the hell's that like a wooden pickle what like when he's sitting on the kid's lap like what do you want like what do you say like fraggle stick car he's like what the fuck is that and like that's like the perfect answer right like what the heck you want? oh my god oh, that's a good movie man for such, sure. a, but such a funny looking kid yeah i don't know what thurman did after this but um he's not around <laughs> Why is isn't it? Thurman could do conventions based off of those two movies alone? Hundred percent, he could. Unless yeah. he, but unless he got skinny, then nobody's gonna want to meet him. He <laughs> He's was got probably, look like Thurman. <laughs> he should have went to Eli Roth and been like, "Yo, I need to be in. I need to be in Thanksgiving. I was in Trick or Treat Halloween movie and it's in a Christmas movie. Can you please let me in Thanksgiving, please? <laughs> please, Mister Roth, I'm coming. <laughs> yeah. I'm only doing holiday films now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So when I see Thurman in this movie, I said to myself, "Oh God, here's Thurman Merman. I wonder if I'm gonna like Thurman Merman." Mm -hmm. Then I see the, I think he was a teacher or something. I forget mm -hmm. the, I forget the guy's the name, the neighbor, the neighbor. Mm -hmm. Then I see his stupid ass kid yelling and <laughs> hollering and screaming out the window. And I said, man, I just wish Thurman would sit on this damn kid and shut yeah. him up. I hated that little bastard. So, uh, I, I liked it. <laughs> I liked it. Um, the hysteria, it's crazy. We'll talk, I'll let you go, but we'll talk about the hysteria of all this now, but, yeah, I thought it was. I thought it was a. It's not my favorite horror anthology film. I don't think. I think my favorite is Tales from the Dark Side, the movie. I, I have a love. I have a passion for that movie. But this is a. This is a great movie. And it's. Uh, I don't watch it every year either. But I'll, I'll stop. I'll stop. I had a great time watching it the first time. How could you not? Right. I mean, first time right. seeing that movie is an experience. It's like a roller coaster. It was awesome, man. And like the way the stories tie together and all the new stories that you're getting. I'm a big anthology guy in general. Um, so I, I, like I said, I really fell in love with it. I was all in. I was buying all the props that came out at the time, like the figures and shit. And I was watching it every Halloween. But honestly, I feel like because I was watching it so much back then, I actually don't find myself ever wanting to watch it anymore. It's weird because I feel like it's still a, a movie that, that everybody is so loves even more now than ever. And like spirit of Halloween's involved with this. And like, you know, you've got your little Sam back there. I have that same statue back there. Like, I mean, there's so much out there that you figured I would still have the same love for it now. And I just like, I'll walk by Sam stuff at the store and be like, eh, I don't know. I got, I've got the, the sideshow doll. I've got the thing. I'm, I'm good. And then people are always like, oh, we need trick or treat on 4k from screen factory. And I'm like, I'm probably good with the one I have, you know, like, I don't know what happened. I don't not like it. I just feel like I'm not as like a mark for it as I was. So I just never find myself. I haven't watched this movie in probably I think the last time I watched it was when the Blu-ray from Screen Factory came out, and that was it. Like it's been a couple years since I've since I've even watched this movie. Yeah, exactly. I was gonna say you you hit the nail on the head. I think this is why I'm actually. It's funny. I, I'm I, I sometimes the older I get and the more I you know revisit some of these old films that I watch. I say to myself, you know what? Especially today when I well, I found out yesterday when you find out that don't worry, guys. We are we have the physical media. We're gonna talk about it. <laughs> Um, but I think people enjoy these long forms mm. when you find out every other day, something's getting remade. And then you find out Jason Blum is going to put his dumb hands 
and I like you, Jason. I really do. He, he had a great episode on Shark Tank, and he's actually a smart business guy. So I'm not hating, but I'm bitter. When he puts his goddamn hands on the Blair Witch Project mm -hmm. now, it's like, of course, at a certain point, you people think we're bitter when we're like, you know, stop remaking shit and stop doing sequels. Because every it's like it's nothing sacred anymore. Like, is nothing fucking sacred anymore. But have you had a chance to talk about Blair Witch? I haven't had a chance to mention it at all. But I mean, I, I don't know what your thoughts are on that. But I mean, I, look, I think it's a bad idea. I it's mean, it's I on just, me. I, 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 I yeah. love it. And I, I think it's bullshit. If you want to make it's just like, here's the thing, Garrett. And I know you're going to echo the same thing. Mm -hmm. Blair Witch changed the landscape of course it, it 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 terrified audiences so bad i don't care people can laugh about it if they want mm -hmm. now but if you were old enough to be around when that thing came out mm -hmm. my mom didn't want me looking at the vhs tape when we were at blockbuster because she thought it was real she's like don't mess don't even look at the back of that leave that alone christian it was so mm -hmm. crazy so to attempt to try to do that again you want to make a sequel that's fine I just mm -hmm. think, but if you have the audacity to say you're going to remake it and make something, because when you remake something, the idea is to make a better film. Otherwise, why do that? It, and that's the problem, I think, with the Blair Witch in general. Like, just leave it alone because that movie is not a movie that can be remade. It was something so different and unique that we never had before. I lived through it. I was there day one. I remember all the AOL fucking websites that you'd go on where they were telling you this shit was this real. This was real. Right. Like I was there for that. So going into that movie, I was like, holy shit, what are we going to see? And I was pretty petrified watching the movie. And like you said, a lot of people are going to like be like, oh, my God, that movie is shitty. And to be honest, as a as a teenager watching that movie in the theater, um, it was like me. It, it was me and two girls and my friend. And we went and I remember like there was certain parts like when they were shaking the tent, the kids were outside. I was like, well, that's kind of creepy. Like if you were out in the woods. And then the ending came and I was like, that's it? Like, oh, that's so stupid. Like, I, I kind of laughed it off. Like, that was my first reaction was at the end of the movie. I remember leaving and being like, what the hell was that shit? Like, I laughed it off. Blair Witch is the only movie that I can remember that I literally thought about that ending for like two weeks every single day mm -hmm. until it started to freak me out like days after I saw the movie. And then after that, I kept just thinking about it and I'm like, wow, that was fucking so creepy and weird that I couldn't wait to see the movie again. And the next time I saw it, I was like, holy shit, that is freaky. Like, I kind of more understood it now, like, right. because it was so different back then that I was like, oh, we're not even going to, you know, you're not used to not seeing a reveal of a killer or anything like that. You just weren't used to that. But then when you start thinking in your head, like, well, it's real. Like, you know, that's why the camera went down and all this stuff. And then once I started the second time and I loved it, that's when it started to get exposed and, and it came out that this was all a big hoax basically like it was actors unknown actors they showed up on like the award show they weren't dead right? right so it was such a crazy experience for me that i just like you said i think the audacity to take the title blair witch and be like well it's a big headline let's try to remake it it's impossible it's impossible to remake it because there's no way in hell ever anybody's going to ever get the same feeling again they can make a found footage movie sure but you'll never get that same feeling when you know going into it that they're just trying to scare you. Where, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's very different. I think the last one, the the the, the sequel that they did a couple of years ago, I actually think that was pretty damn good, all things considered, for a sequel. And I know a lot of people probably hate that thing. But I'm like, to be honest, as a sequel to this where he's trying to find his sister, and you understand it's fake, but I think that they captured pretty cool, like, the aesthetic of kind of the, the first one even though you knew it was all just like a, a, a glorified, like produced sequel, you know, mm -hmm. it still was, had some creepy elements to it. Yeah. I just, I just wish Blumhouse would try to make their own Blair Witch. And what I mean by that is not literally blaze your own trail. You know? 100%. But I, I don't, you know what, if I, like I always say, if I like, if I watch it and I like it, I'll be the first to admit I was wrong. I'll agree. Totally. You know? I ain't got no problem with that. I'll definitely um, check it out. Let's put it yeah. that way. So, yeah. So when it comes to trick or treat though, I'm with you. I think they keep shoving this damn movie. Like, here's the thing. Like the first, it was 2019 or 18. I think it was 19. It might've even been 18. They had these statues, this mm -hmm. one at spirit and people were freaking out because this is the first time spirit did something really cool for horror collectors. And I remember getting it and I was like, this is incredible. I love this. And you know, 
Then they did a Michael one the year after that. Then they did another Sam, which I have up there where he's standing up holding the pumpkin, Mm -hmm. which is actually an even better design in my opinion. And then they keep putting out, it was like spirit Halloween and trick or treat are like almost synonymous now to the point to where they've been pumping out so much merch for the movie. It's not a, it's not the movie's fault. And I'm not saying they're dumb for doing it, but as a per, as a, as a customer, I am legitimately so excited for a part two just to get some different shit and to actually just see a different trick or treat movie because this movie has been shoved down my throat so much with spirit Halloween and everything. It's like, you know what, please, for God's sakes. Yeah. Just please make a new one. That way that can look at something different. I can make Mm -hmm. like change something up in part two, just do something so I can see and look at just so I can see a number two on all the merchandise, just with something new. Cause you guys keep shoving this trick or treat stuff down my throat, please. At this point. Yeah. Fucking make another one. So that's how I feel about trick or treat now. You know, it is a weird franchise for it to be pumping so much into, because I still feel like it's not universally well known. I mean, the horror community. Sure. But like, to, to the average person, I mean, do they know who the hell Sam is? And, and and if that's the case and all this merch that it's getting now, like why the hell is this not priority one to get a sequel? Out? It's been so long that this is like the perfect time now because people at least know the character by going to spirit Halloween. All of a sudden they see, start seeing commercials with that bag head kit on it. They're like, Oh, I remember yeah. that. Like, I don't know what the holdup is. It's like, you, this needs to be done now. Well, I, you know, I, I feel like trick or tr- I feel like spirit Halloween has, is George Lucas saying, this movie because it's like i almost wonder if they're testing the waters and for the younger people i'll explain what i mean by that in a mm-hmm. second but like i feel like they're testing the waters for all this merchandise and they're seeing how much it sells and you're right i think the character is just so adorable to people that they're like oh that's so cute let me just let me get this little statue of this little orange guy that's so cool um what they're gonna do mark my words they're gonna pump the original into theaters either this year or next year and they're going to make money off that. And then they're going to do part two the year after or something. Or they may even do a double feature thing together. But they're, they, I guarantee you, they're going to put the original movie back in theaters. They, Mark they my should. Word. I don't know why it hasn't been done so yet. But I mean, they definitely should. Especially like you said, enough people can. Have, it's got at least brand recognition, if anything, now. Yeah. So when it comes to this release, you know, there were a number of trick or treat releases, but uh, where I was pretty surprised when they announced that they were putting out a Scream Factory was doing trick or treat because this was kind of before they were grabbing. I feel like it was this was maybe 2018 or something. I forget the exact date. I know it was pre COVID because I just I just know it was. But I felt like this was an interesting title for them to do at the time because uh they weren't really tackling a lot of two thousands movies. There were a few, I think like silent Hill and everything, but Mm -hmm. um, yeah, when they, when they announced this, I think I even gave away my old Blu-ray releases to like Kate, my buddy Kayla and stuff. Cause like, Oh, why would I need that? I'm going to get the, the, Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to get the trust scream factory one. And I um, love the artwork too. uh, I mean, that's why like, I looked at it and I'm like, I don't know if I'd upgrade the 4k. I I think this is just a really cool addition. I mean, cause you, it, you know, I'm a, I'm a big stickler. It doesn't have the bar on the top, like the big strip. It's really nice artwork. And then underneath, you can flip it to the original artwork if you want. Devin, Devin Whitehead did this one again. I mean, he it's killed just, it. I don't, I don't see them getting a, a better addition. I mean, sure. Can this look better in 4K? Maybe a little. I mean, it's not, you know, it, it's still a, a relatively modern movie. So I don't know. Um, I, I'm really happy with this. I don't know if I'd ever upgrade this, to be honest with you, but well, I guess TBD, because you know it's going to be coming. It's probably going to be this year. Yeah. So I do recommend this release, guys, if you don't have this. If you have one of the uh, the standard Blu-rays, I'm sure that the picture quality is the same, but this does have new new interviews. I think Doherty's on here. Yeah, he is. So Commentary. And there's uh, interviews, yeah. And they have a trick or treat seasons greetings animated short by Michael Doherty, but I have to imagine that was put on other ones. I don't know why that would be a Scream Factory exclusive, but um, yeah, it's a good release, I think. And I'm yeah, I'm pretty sure I had the uh, get the original artwork on the other one. So yeah, I remember getting this, and I, I what's funny is I think this is actually still available from Scream Factory. I feel like it is. It could be, you know, but yeah. There we go. Trick or treat. That's the, that's one trick or treat. And clearly this is the, the last one to come out out of the three. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's spelled like this. 
Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, the one of them, it's it, one of them. It's funny. The I think the oldest movie out of the three is kind of the weirdest one with trick or treats. Mm-hmm. Right, uh, trick or treat. Yeah, that they had to skirt that license. And <laughs> is there another? Let me ask you this: Is there another variant they can use to make a trick or treat movie? Is there another variant? Can anybody make a, the the third trick or treat or trick or treat? We will keep trick or treats out of it. Or would maybe do tricks or treat? Oh, you could do tricker. T r i c k e r. Trick or treat. It's. <laughs> Yeah. Oh man. But yeah, guys, that's as as of right now, the nicest release you can get is the Scream Factory one. And uh yeah, you can't beat that artwork. Just solid. Mm-hmm. Uh Garrett, do you want to go to trick or treats next? Because th- we're probably sure. not gonna spend a whole lot of time on this and we'll save what I consider to be the, the main event for last. Yeah. Tell me about the first time you hear about tr- trick or treats. Okay. So the first time I heard about trick or treats was um <laughs> I'm a big fan, obviously, like I said, back in the DVD days, I was a big fan of Anchor Bay DVD stuff. So I was at a convention and there was a bootleg table and I didn't realize it was a bootleg table. So they had some a stack of DVDs with the little Anchor Bay logo on the bottom. So I was like, what are these? And one of them was trick or treats. And I was like, holy shit, I don't own this. I never even seen this. And then come to find out the guy that was working the table is like, oh, that's a bootleg. It's not a, that movie is not available other than VHS. And I was like, they bootlegged it and put an Anchor Bay logo at the bottom. That's weird. <laughs> right? So I bought it. I think I bought it with like a stack of like another couple <laughs> things. Another couple movies with the same thing. Yeah. And I probably st- I may have this edition still. I may have gotten rid of it. But um, so I bought it. And that's where I saw it for the first time. And I and I actually kind of liked it. Um, so when they announced. It's not bad. It, no. When yeah. they announced this, this is the Code Red Blue, right? I think you have the Kino one, right? No, Code Red. You do? How the hell do you have a slip? I seriously bought this the day it came out. Oh, maybe you, maybe, they, maybe they did like a re-release with slip because like this was like way back. Yeah, um, you're probably gonna be upset when I tell you when I got this. All right, yeah. So this I bought this on day one. This might have been even back when like Code Red. You still had to buy it off of like a weird like website. Like they had like their own little like website that you had to buy their stuff on. I probably snagged it on that um, when it hit Blu-ray because I'm like, I want to see this movie in better quality. And I, and I will say this, this came out in 82. I actually like this movie. Uh, it, it's, it's very eighties horror esque. I mean, there's nothing in this that is mind blowing. It's fun. It's cheesy, but I actually do like this one a lot. And I don't know how much you remember of this, but we can talk about it after you talk, tell me your story. Yeah. Um. So I, was talking to a friend. I think it was Lorne from Visit by Voices, but I can't remember. Uh, mm-hmm. And I think I was talking about Trick or Treat. And it was probably one of many conversations I've had with anybody like, yeah, man, I wish that movie would get like a Blu-ray release, blah, blah, blah. And he, and he, he, I think he made a joke to me like, I didn't know people were really liking Trick or Treats. And I was like, I didn't think nothing of it. Then he sent the picture of the poster and I was like, Oh my God, that's a movie. (laughs) And so I went on Tubi and watched it and it's been, it's been, it was 2019 or 18 when I watched it. So I have slept since then Mm. and I have been, I haven't got a chance to watch this because I got this three days ago. (laughs) Are you serious? (laughs) I swear to God. I swear to God. (laughs) I got it on Amazon and it was, it was a fair price. It was 19, $19.99, $20. $19.99, $20. It wasn't because I have a cutoff price with Blu-rays. If it's if it's a boutique Blu-ray from a company, like I out 22 is usually my price. And with 4Ks, usually I try to I try to stay well under 30. It just depends sometimes. Now yeah, there, this it's this code red doesn't have any kino. That's weird, man. It says code red. So yeah, that is I, wild. I bought it because I was like, you know what? I I, I want to own this. I don't own it, and I genuinely and this is something I, I wanted to maybe talk about. So don't comment on this now because this is something me you and Ken can talk about if we ever do, or we will when we do another one of those physical media things. But I genuinely enjoy cataloging a lot of horror movies, whether I like them or not. I'm not saying I don't like Trick or Treat, but I genuinely enjoy cataloging movies. So I didn't have this, and I thought I did for a second. So like, I, I have a book where when I do I, my movies are in alphabetical order, but I do write them down in a big book, and I look for it. And I was like, no, it's not on there. So. I got it off Amazon literally this past week. Within seven days, I got it, and I was shocked that it had a slipcover. So if that you want wild. this, 
it wow. comes <laughs> and it's a pretty nice little slip yeah cord. that's i mean that is insane because like yeah literally i've had this thing for i don't know whenever the hell this thing was released which could have been i mean maybe 2015 maybe i don't know it's been yeah. a long time since i've had this but i don't see um, it there. it's uh it's a f- i think it's a fun little movie yeah, this there's some scenes that are very weird like the, the i don't know how much you remember but like the first scene this woman has like the insane asylum come and like take her husband away for no reason like she made up all this shit about him and then right, he, like, the first right. he's he's like wrestling these guys like for like seriously like 10 minutes in a pool because they're trying to get him like into the truck and it is kind of a little bit of cringe but it starts to kind of develop into a better story when um the woman ends up having a babysitter babysit her little kid and this kid just starts playing tricks on this babysitter pretending he's killing himself and all this other stuff. So that's a fun part. And then the kid's father ends up like coming back. Coming back. And, yeah. And then, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's pretty good. I would say, I would say for a low, uh, lower budget eighties kind of slasher movie around Halloween. I think it's pretty effective if, um, if people haven't seen it, I agree. And I'm a big David Carradine fan. I think everybody mm-hmm. is right. This, if you're off on Halloween day, if you're not working and you're at home, or, or let's say Halloween Eve. This is the perfect, you know, noon, 1 p.m. horror movie. You don't, <laughs> you don't end your day with trick or treat. Yeah. You start it. Sure. And I think you have a lot of fun. I, I, it's just a charmer. And uh, I got to say, I am in love with this poster. I would love a 27 mm-hmm. by 41 mm-hmm. of this. Mm-hmm. This Great. rivals like Chopping Mall, you know, with the mm-hmm. bag and stuff. And Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I I love it. So I'm happy to have this. So if anybody wants this, if you get off off of Amazon, I'm I'd I'd like to say you'll probably get it with a slip. Which I, you know, I figured because I know you kind of display some of your movies if it's a certain catalog mm-hmm. of brand that doesn't have a lot of slips, you'll take them off. But it's interesting to hear you say that yours didn't no, come with one whatsoever. Definitely didn't get a slip for that. No. Am, am I am I losing my mind, or did this also come up from Vinegar Syndrome? No, I don't think so. Uh, I don't believe so. It it couldn't have been. No, I don't think because I would have if if that was the case, I probably would have uh, did something with this. I probably wouldn't have kept this around if it did. I think this is it. I think yeah, this it. it has to it has to be. Yeah, yeah I'm I sure would. I would have gotten it because I do like it a lot, and I would have tossed that or I would have sold it or gave it away or something. But yeah, yeah so I'm almost positive that's probably the last of it. But you know that's code red so in my head i'm thinking someone might eventually put that out again is code red even a th- well i guess they are for now but are they putting out titles still or do they just kind of exist well so the the owner died a couple of like last year so right, in true. my head i'm thinking that they're done but i know that like kino acquired a lot of stuff and i don't know if they're just kind of passing the the titles around and and, and other companies are re-releasing them i don't know if they're doing anything new, I think that's just a lot of backlog stuff that they probably still have. And I think Kino has a lot of it. I'm pretty sure. Like if you go on their site and type in code red, a lot shows up there. So I don't know if they have their library and you may see Kino release that in like a better edition or if, I mean, if Boogans can get a 4k, I'm thinking trick or treats could get a 4k too. Trick or treats um, with an S trick or treats with an S and you would upgrade to the 4k UHD. For the um, <laughs> I would say it depends. I think I would really have to, if it, it, I would, to be honest, and this is a weird thing to say, I think the packaging would make the difference for me. Oh, a thousand percent. Cause I don't think there's enough meat on the bone to, to upgrade unless there was something really cool about uh, the edition itself, instead of just a standard looking release. I'm sure this Blu-ray looks really good too. Like I said, I, I just, it says on the back of here. I don't know if it says it on the, yeah, it says on the same thing. It's, it's from the 35. Yeah. The the Blu-ray looked fine. I thought, I mean, I wasn't blown away, but I was in the sense that I was watching it on a bootleg VHS rip for years. So to me, this looks fine. Um, Uh, I would recommend definitely checking it out again. If you haven't watched it, actually you haven't because you said you just got that. So, yeah. I mean, I've seen it and I remember, I remember enjoying it a lot. Like I, I just, uh, I don't know. I, I did, like I said, I liked it. I had a great time with this and it was just, I, I knew what I was getting into just based on the title. I just figured oh, this is going to be very modest, but there were certainly some funny moments in this. And, uh, I like, like I said, David Carradine's always great. So 
I'm glad we showed it too because I guarantee there's probably a lot of people that are going to watch this that have never seen that. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I mean, con- considering a lot of the stuff that came out during the early 80s, and this was what, 82? Two, I think, yeah. I mean, I could, I would certainly take Trick or Treat over a lot. Of, like, I'll tell you a movie I really wanted to like, and I think that there are a few good moments in it, but it is a drag. I don't think Trick or Treats is a drag at all. It's not boring. Mm-hmm. A movie like Ghost Ship, one of the best poster arts mm-hmm. I've ever seen in my entire life. It's incredible. Uh, but the movie is just slow. It moves like, like a fucking boat. Like Ghost Ship, Ghost Ship like the 2000s one? Or no. The original Death Ship. Death Ship. Thank yeah. you. Death yeah. Ship incredible po- i have the release that might even be code red as well um but i have the blu-ray of that i bought it solely on the poster art i remember seeing mm-hmm. it on in search of darkness and i was like oh fuck yeah it's funny because they actually covered it on part three and they really threw icing and sprinkles on that movie when they were talking about mm-hmm. it and i just was screaming at my tv like you're all fucking liars <laughs> quit fucking lying stop it's lying a, <laughs> it's a little slow the death ship is yeah i'm yeah. trying to think who put it out i think scorpion did i think okay yeah scorpion cut like yeah. all those are all those like ridiculously yeah. small niche i, I little... actually think that scorpion and code red are like i think the guy who runs scorpion is the guy who ran code red's brother so it's all <laughs> it's all the same thing man <laughs> for real it's like, it's just like <laughs> i think it is i'm almost positive it's bill's brother. Uh, they had were they italian Olsen was the last name, so I don't know. I was going to say, because this, this sounds like the most Italian thing in the world. Like, the brothers <laughs> getting an argument. Like, fuck <laughs> you, I'm starting my own physical media They company. could be, actually. I mean, well, if you ever heard Bill Olsen talk, he kind of sounds like he's got that Italian. He might be. Anyway. So. But yeah, guys, ch- Trick or Treats, th- this video was somewhat of an excuse for me to actually be able to talk about this movie, because everybody has probably seen Trick or Treat and Trick or Treat, but Trick or Treats is clearly probably the least good out of the three, but there really is no loser in this bunch. And I think for a lot of people digging for those early eighties horror films, this is like you said, somebody's going to see this and say, Oh, I, I never even heard of that. Hell yeah. Let me check it out. And yeah, if you want, if you're a physical media person right now, go to Amazon. They're not paying me. Code red ain't paying <laughs> me a dime. Go to Amazon and grab it. Trick or treats, man. So, yeah, fun little early 80s horror film. I'm excited to watch this. And like I said, if I, I'm off tomorrow, I'm going to watch this in a daytime because this isn't a nighttime movie. This is a day, You get your day started with this. You don't end well, it. The next one we're going, going to talk about is a good one to end your night with, right? That's right. Um, and real quick, just know, Garrett, um, for a bonus, we're going to go over the All Hallows Eve oh, movies. Oh, <laughs> Oh baby, <laughs> that, uh, that is funny though. I did, I did happen to. I was, I was grabbing my movies and I saw this and I was like, man, there really are two All Hallows Eve. <laughs> yeah, there's a, there's a bunch of stuff like that. Hollow, All Hallows Eve. There's one Halloween night. I think I have. Um, yeah, there's yeah. a bunch of crazy like random horror movies from that back then that uh, are wacky. I don't. What's that one right there? Oh, I think I saw you <laughs> showcase that. that so it's that like new one. here's here's All Hallows Eve with Art the Clown. Right? Yeah. And I love All Hallows Eve. That's a fun movie. <laughs> Dude, we gotta make a movie called All Hallows Eve. Oh shit! Somebody's already made one. Drop the drop the apostrophe. Yeah. Oh, hollow. Yeah. <laughs> drop the apostrophe. <laughs> I actually never even heard of this thing, so I'm curious how that thing is. Hey, you know, you can reach out to your MVD rep because guess you put it out. <laughs> oh baby, MVD visual. It's coming out on Blu-ray soon. Um, 2015, <laughs> and I got it. Like I said, yeah, I got it from my video store. I, I did a video. Where I bought a bunch of, uh, I bought a bunch of, uh, oh, you know what's funny? You got really quick. People told me this movie's actually really good. Sure so I clowns. can't. I know what I have that. I don't even know if I've ever watched it, to be honest. Dude, people were telling me, no, no, Christian, that movie's good. They actually made a part two. I'm like, what? Like, I that bought this. I bought this just because every time I go to my video store, there's like four copies of it, and I always laugh when I pull it out. Now, of course, I bring it home thinking people are going to get a chuckle out of it. And all I get is, no, dude, it's really good. <laughs> you know what? Though, some of those underrated ones, you know which one that you got is really good is um the Blair Witch. The the, the dudes who did that movie for the uh, in front of Blair Witch. That was their first film. Altered? That's a good movie. That's pretty good, dude. Yeah. Is it found footage? Uh, I'm trying to think. I don't think so. No. No, I don't look like it. Two of the pictures in the back kind of look like they're found footage. But, but it was actually a pretty, it's a pretty good movie. So you could tell that those guys had something. Yeah, I got a, I got a good haul. I got, I got to go online though and get Bloody Murder one because mm. I can't stand just having two. 
you know mm-hmm. that this deserves Classic. a five part series talking about <laughs> these movies was there two or three of those suckers i know that there's two um i'm i there could be three i don't know but clearly paramount said not 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 because in mm-hmm. part two it's just a they got a dollar store mask on and they <laughs> like he wears the hockey mask in one and they had to have told him i don't think so because mm-hmm. in two they <laughs> they ripped it off so all right garrett <clears throat> so the last one we're going to talk about now of course let's get let's talk about this uh sever synapse films not severin films synapse films last year Mm-hmm. said hey guys guess what we got great news mm-hmm. trick or treat is in fact coming to 4k uhd big news well we're thinking it's gonna come out that halloween it was supposed to that was the plan yes and and then you can you can fill in the blanks after this so okay. it was either late last year or it's not ahead of me because I keep I'm thinking it's February. It's fucking April. It was probably a month or so ago, maybe in February. Dead Pit does a show with Michael Felsher. Two mm-hmm. Scoops Felsher, I think they call him. Slippy. Slippy. And, and two scoops, yeah. Two scoops. Yeah. And they're straight up saying, like, dude, because apparently he works with Synapse. <clears throat> right. So he's actually the guy who got this whole ball rolling. He's the one who found the the all the material for Trick or Treat. He's the one that realized that it could be possible that this, that they, that they do this. He was the guy. Um, so what's interesting too, is that he, he runs red shirt pictures and what he's trying to do as well, I believe is that he's trying to make red shirt pictures now also, uh, Distribution? kind of like, boot. yeah. So like he's working with synapse. So on the back of the, the case, it'll say synapse films and red shirt shirt pictures. Like, so technically it's his first real, um physical media for his brand so i mean he's working head hand in hand with synapse so it's technically like a double um bill kind of thing and they're working together i think synapse is doing the restoration and he's doing all the features and getting all the interviews and everything done that way so they're working hand in hand on it now the last i heard was that they're still waiting on some of slippy's material to finalize this whole thing um, as far as if there's anything else, I also heard rumors about artwork stuff they were trying to do that was taking a little bit longer. Maybe the certain type of box that's going to come in. I don't know. I, I, I was actually a part of a conversation um, where there was a possible interview that they were really trying to get. And it had to do with a celebrity that was in the movie. And it also had to do with somebody that had access to this celebrity now. And there was talks of trying to get an interview done for this movie, which meant if they could get that interview done and based on the timeline, they'd never be able to release it on time because it just was too close. But they really wanted this interview to happen. So they said, well, if we even have to to push it back, I think the fans will understand. Now, if that is any if that happened, I don't know if it's ever going to happen. I don't know. Is there more things that are holding us back? I don't know that either. So. All I do know is that I wouldn't say this is never coming. I think it's just taking way longer than anticipated. Mm. Um, But it's kind of a bummer because I know everybody wants it, including myself. And I know you do too. I do. You know, I, I like this movie a lot. And the thing is with this movie, (coughs) I know that when this thing finally does come out, it's going to weigh probably four pounds. And it's going to be really expensive. And we're all just going to grit our teeth. <laughs> yeah, I'm going I'm I'm to close my eyes and say, here's my money. I need that edition. Sure. Uh, I, 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 I'm not trying to get you, I'm not trying to get you to give any more detail on this. I'm just expressing this. I pray to God. I was sticking my tongue out for a reason. I'm not trying to be gross. I'm doing my Gene Simmons impression because mm. I pray to God. It's him <laughs> and not Ozzy. God bless Ozzy. I can't understand I'm sorry, all my British fans out there and all my Australian fans. Well, Australian, not so much. My buddy Cosplay Chris, I can understand him. Some of these British people, I can't understand a fucking word they wow. say. <laughs> and Ozzy, I literally, I can't, I, I'd need subtitles. I'd need subtitles. I love Ozzy, the biggest Ozzy fan in the world, but I'm also a big Gene Simmons fan. And I think Gene had the cooler character, quite frankly, as the DJ. So I would love if, if they could get Gene Simmons and I know that's not who you're talking about because I know 
who you know who now has that because we all know we all know who has access to Ozzy. It's not a secret. Uh, but I don't, I'd much rather be Gene Simmons. Gene Simmons. I, I mean, born. you never know who's already, who's already done. I don't, I don't know who's been interviewed. I just know someone like Slippy is going to do what he can and, and to find the people he needs to find. And he'll, if it's a, if the, if it's a possibility, I guarantee he's making sure it happens. Is Gene Simmons or Ozzy one? Who knows? They could be on there. They could both not be on there. I have no idea, but I, I, I know that when this is released, it's going to be amazing because those guys put great work into their releases. Yeah. They, 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 and, and, you know, as much as people want to say stuff about synapse in the sense that are they, are they <laughs> a little pricey? Sure. Do they promise that this is the only edition they're going to do? And then they come out with a standard later. Yes. So there are a lot of issues there, but the one thing I will say about synapse films is that they're not the company that's going to put out 12 things a year the company that's going to put out four to five, maybe six, uh, four Ks a year, but they're going to work their work because they're working their asses off on making sure whatever they have access to is going to come out the best it possibly can. So I will say when this thing finally comes out, I think it's going to be unbelievable. I just hope that they really go all out with it. Like I'm hoping to get a steel book in a hard box with a soundtrack. I just hope that like, it's the presentation was worth the wait. I hope it's just not like, oh, here's a steel book, trick or treat on 4K, and it's got cool stuff in it, but it just looks like every one of their other releases. I th I hope that this really gets like the grand treatment oh, for they, them because if you know Synapse, they don't do a lot of that stuff. They do slip covers and steel books. That's it. That's it. So it would really have to be something that they haven't done yet. But I think with a release like this, it's, they might not have. I think this is the one they need to really do. It. Yeah, I mean, because they've they've kind of dipped their toes into the deluxe. Like, I have a couple, right? I've got a. Uh, I I think they did. Oh Phenomena. yeah, they, did, they, they did You're right. They Tenebrae. okay. They did some of the Argento stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they have done cool release like that. You're right. You're right. Um, I I didn't get the Phenomena, but I should have because they put the monkey on the front, and I really like the monkey in Phenomena. But I got the Tenebrae chunky box. You're right. Yeah. They did a great. They did a. It's great like very box. very similar to Arrow. You put them right next to it, and they go perfectly. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, I just feel like I'm going to say it because I can already read all the comments. This is totally public. He's gone on. He's sh taken pictures with a Sean Clark represents Ozzy. So everybody and their mama is saying to herself, well, of course, Garrett's going to talk about Ozzy because Sean Clark. But I'm telling you, I want Gene Simmons. I want Gene Simmons on the box set. Um, of course. And of course, they're going to get the family ties, kid, the star, because I mean, I'm he's a he was on in search of darkness so clearly he has no problem talking about this movie but you know garrett my favorite in search of documentary of all time is in search of tomorrow and i implore people to watch that and guess who was on in search of tomorrow gene simmons was on in search of tomorrow talking about uh what was that movie he did where he dresses in drag what was that movie it's a oh, good movie 86 he was on search of tomorrow the sci-fi one the sci-fi one Hmm. What was that damn movie? Somebody in the chat's or he, they know what I'm talking about. He did a movie where he dressed like a woman. Let me look and see. I, it's probably on the tip of, my, tip of my tongue. Unless I'm getting that movie confused with another one. Uh, Runaway? No. Runaway? No. Runaway. He was in Runaway, but... That's the movie I'm thinking of. Maybe that's not the one he talked about, but... Black Moon... Right? No, not that one. He's not in that. I don't know what... Uh... I guess Runaway is the one everybody keeps mentioning on Google, but I mean, I'm I'm just looking really quick. Yeah, it's Runaway. It's a, it is a science fiction movie. I'm not going crazy. It's Runaway. He talked about Runaway on on that, and he he had a lot of good things to say. Hmm. You know, this was during an interesting time in Gene's career. You know, he was not in he was not an '80s rock lover at the time. He he talked about like I I, I every all the guys in the bands are trying to look like the women out in the crowd and I was very uncomfortable. So what does he do? He goes and makes movies where he dresses like that. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I actually think Gene was a pretty good actor. And like I said, I really like him as the DJ and um, the trick or treat. I mean, Ozzy's character is hysterical because he's the, on the TV as the, uh, you know, the anti rock guy. And he did a great job in that too. But uh, yeah, great movie. I didn't see trick or treat until I got this. Um, and I don't know if you have this, I don't. I I've always wanted that. 
release. There was is that the one from overseas? It is because it had like the one I the one I always wanted and I I passed on it and then it sold out was like a media book. It had like a you could get in a lot of different covers and stuff like that. I don't know if that's right. a different version of that, but I don't I don't own the only thing I own mm. is this 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 budget DVD with the worst cover on it ever. Yeah, <laughs> that's all I got. Well, I'm gonna tell uh, you I'm gonna tell you what's better about this than this. Well, I'm gonna tell you so because I want to I want to talk about this because so. Yeah, this is probably what you're talking about because this is NSM Records label, mm -hmm. the German, and they do a lot of media book stuff. Um, so this is how I first got the movie. I could have watched it on YouTube, but uh, I don't know what it is about that. I try not to. I've still avoided Blood Beach because I'm like, I can't let YouTube be the way I watch this movie. Mm -hmm. first. I have a goddamn original poster in here, but I haven't seen the movie yet. <laughs> like, that's it just makes no sense to me. But so I, I started listening to the soundtrack to trick or treat because I kept seeing the image of Sammy Kerr on something. And I was like, Oh man, that's gotta be a cool rock and roll movie. So I typed in trick or treat soundtrack. And sure enough, I found the band fast way, which now I'm a gigantic fan of uh fast way. Great band. And mm -hmm. on this guys, listen, this is not trick or treat. This is not fast ways. Best record. They put out their debut record is the best barroom blues, rock and roll record. It looks like a checkerboard. So if you ever look up the band fast way on Spotify or anything, it's their debut record. It's the most epic barroom blues, rock and roll you'll ever hear. Uh, and the singer of this band Garrett went on to be in flogging Molly. And then they had a huge record and career. He had a career resurgence in 2000. That. Yeah, that's him. But I, um, yeah, I remember that band. Yeah. Yeah. Great, great singer. Um, so yeah, it's a good movie. I, I like it a lot. I, I like it a lot. I think out of the three trick or treat movies, this is the best one. I think so too. You know, yeah. and I think it has a lot more to offer. I think the soundtrack just kicks your ass completely. And uh, it's really, it's, it's, it's really whimsical in a lot of the ways trick or treat is, but uh, it's just such a heavy metal and horror go a lot of people say that they're so synonymous anyway so to actually literally legitimately make a movie about those two mm -hmm. just seems like a match made in heaven the weird thing is how this movie is not it's weird when you watch trick or treat 86 trick or treat it's like man this seems like it should be the biggest pop culture thing today right. at all it's it's because everybody's obsessed with 80s culture and mm -hmm. hair metal is gigantic i mean def leppard is doing stadium still so it's like uh, why is this movie not incredibly gigantic and i got to imagine part of it is because you can't really stream it anywhere can you this movie is very hard to locate in, in all aspects. I mean, even when you look at this DVD, which was really the only U.S. release was from this. And it's put now it's put out by a company called Platinum Disc. <laughs> like the, the, it's it's a no name company. This thing looks like it was at it, like these would be at just yard sales, like dollar bins or whatever. Like this is this is garbage. Like as far as the, the way it's it looks like. <laughs> Gene looks like shit on the front cover. Like, but I mean, imagine seeing this on the shelf or in a dump bin. You're not nothing about this you want to get. It looks like it's probably like the biggest crap shoot with these two on the front. The, the way the logo is on the top, <laughs> the names like, are on the front. It's junk, right? Like, but this is a fantastic movie, and I I know a lot of people are probably going to disagree and think Trick or Treat is better just because again it feels the more mainstream out of the three. This one, obviously, you've got to be somewhat into heavy metal i think to really appreciate this but i think as a whole it's the coolest of the three and i think this thing cleaned up it's gonna be this thing is gonna get a big resurgence because it's just that good there's a few things about this dvd i want to tell people about first of all okay if you're asking me which one do you prefer it's the dvd now why do i prefer the dvd does this look a little bit better than this maybe Right. It's I mean, I, I it, it's 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 marketed on the back as full 1080p and everything. And it probably does look a little better. I don't know if they upscale it because I don't know. I, I, I'd have to think they didn't. I mean, it is widescreen, which I, I think this is, in fact, full screen. Um, So they probably upscaled this. So it's probably a little bit sharper. It didn't look really bad. This is also region free. But I'm going to tell you why I prefer the DVD version over this. Um, the audio on this is not that great. And the reason I would prefer the DVD, even though this is full screen, is because the audio on this sounds way better. The music sounds a lot more crystal clear. 
and and it sounds stereo. And of course, this is a movie that is filled with tr- uh, fastway songs, especially in the beginning when we get a da 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 da, and it just it hits on the DVD. Um, and this is so unique about this DVD to me. I didn't. I, I never really paid attention about this till today. Dude, look at the back. It's behind the scenes images of yeah, them setting up the de- the demon and then them setting wild. up the Sammy Kerr head. Like they put that on the back of this. That's wild. That is wicked wild. I I just noticed that right now. <laughs> yeah. Wow. That is strange. You know what else is funny about this too? Look at where it says the features. Like, and it's all checked, like to tell you like how great this is. Full like, screen. <laughs> yeah, full screen. Digitally re- digitally mastered. Full screen. Interactive menus. D- Dolby Digital English. Scene access. It says scene access. Sick. scene select is basically what they mean by that <laughs> but, but yeah see this um this says it's dts master audio on the back but i'm i'm telling you i have both of these it's the, the dvd has just sounds better than this than the blu-ray um obviously artwork wise it's no comparison but if if synapse releases a chunky box release of this and it's this artwork garrett's gonna mark out <laughs> <laughs> could you imagine <laughs> like, how dare you? Could yeah, no, they, except they update gene and, and ozzy to their age now <laughs> <laughs> they should have that in there as like reversible artwork just as a, as a joke or something you know <laughs> i don't think i have anything else from platinum disc corporation i don't think i do either man. do you have a uh, scene index in yours I think I do. No, no, no. I got artwork on the disc, though. You? Oh yeah. I mean, I've got the, you got the little head, the little heads on there. <laughs> it's pathetic that you got to ask if I've got disc artwork. <laughs> like you never know with Platinum. Disc, oh, I don't know what's going Platinum on. Platinum Disc Corporation. <laughs> I don't even know where I got this thing. To be quite honest with you, I could have got this out of like a yard sale for all I know. Yeah. So I used to remember seeing this on the DVD. I wonder if this has a VHS. It probably did, right? I'm sure it had. To well, be, yeah. well, it's called Platinum Disc Corporation, so it might be interesting <laughs> if they put out a VHS. Now I just got to Google this. Uh, trick or treat VHS. Oh my God! I don't think it did. It had to. Oh no, no, no. it yeah. did. It got a Lorimar release, which that's a cool image though, too, huh? With that, with the demon thing and him in yeah. the fire. On MoviePosterShop.com, which is a website I use to get prints if I don't want to spend a lot of money, they have. And so what's interesting about this, Garrett, is now I I know of two movies. Make that three movies that were actually put out by Lorimar Home Video or mm-hmm. Lorimar Entertainment. Because this is Hold when up. I think of Lorimar, I think of Full House, the TV show. That was <laughs> Lorimar TV. So Return of the Living Dead 2 was Lorimar Home Video. Trick or Treat is also Laura Mar home video and the last starfighter was produced by Laura Mar. So those are three movies I know that have the Laura Mar branding on it. Mm-hmm. Now, you know, there's a great company called media crypt where he makes t-shirts and hats and stuff of brand logos. Like you can get a wizard video shirt or a mm-hmm. Canon shirt, a media shirt. I wanted to make a Laura Mar home video shirt. Cause I would rock the shit out of that. <sighs> and why don't you just make one and put it on your damn t-, t-, t store? I may as well. You're right. Because I mean, it's not like it's not like Laura Mars a thing anymore. So, yeah, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do that. But, uh, yeah, trick or treat. Um, you make Laura Mar, and I'm gonna make Platinum Discord. Platinum. <laughs> 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 Dude, you got like, Christian. My shirts aren't selling. Are yours? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, what the hell? Yes, but they did not put this. That Platinum Disc did not put out. Uh, <laughs> Platinum Disc Corporation did not put out a VHS of Trick or Treat. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's the three Trick or Treat movies. And um, I, I guys, I would, at this point, don't buy this. Do not. Just wait. Um, and I don't know if Synapse does the Blu-ray and 4K release simultaneously. Like, I don't know if they're going to do a... Uh, I feel I like know. they kind of do but not really like they did for demons one and two when mm-hmm. they put out the deluxe versions of those of demons one and two they did a box set or they, they did a release of the movies as remastered 4k blu-ray and then they put out an actual i also 4K wouldn't be set. surprised for something like trick-or-treat if they don't have like two options like a like a big chunky collector's edition and maybe like a steel book like so you could get either or like the expensive one or like the more i guess yeah. well you I'm know saying. If, if they follow suit with what they've been doing, you've got a six-month window. Mm-hmm. 
you know, the issue I had with synapse for a long time was they would just kind of dance around. And look, I, I, I know. I, I remember. They would I know. Kind of they, dance they, around. They, they and do I, the expensive steel book, and then six months later, it would get a standard. Yeah, yeah. But and people, like, well. I would see people ask about it, and pe people would get mad, and they would say, "Hey, we're asking you if you're going to do this, and you give us a runaround answer. We have no plans at this time." Well, people, I just think they all say, "No, no, no. We, you know, if you are, or you're not. Just please tell us." They have since changed mm -hmm. their business plan, and they have been open about that. The the, the there was a release they did where they did say we are going to do a standard version of this. Mm -hmm. Look, I like Synapse. I think they they're a solid company. Just always please just don't just treat the customers honestly. Don't lie. It's not that you lied, but people don't like wishy-washy answers. It's almost worse than not answering it to be honest with you. Because you're just going to piss people off. I love you, Synapse. I'm excited for this. I can't wait to review it. I can't wait to promote it. Not that you're paying me or asking me to. But because I love physical media, I'm going to make sure everybody I know knows about Trick or Treat when it comes out. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I, I just feel what, they, what they're probably going to do is release it. And it's collector's release. And then down the road they'll do a stand but i don't understand release. why these companies wouldn't just do the three right up front because you're going to get the people that that are going to buy the not everybody's going to go the cheap route either you know what i mean like if, if you just gave them three options like you know limited chunky box steel book standard everything's priced a different price point i mean i don't know why that would be such a bad thing it's got to be the upfront cost of of all the production i mean they pr I'm, I'm sure Syn i don't even i i wouldn't be surprised if you told me the guys who run synapse don't have day jobs uh, no, they don't, but I'm going to tell you right now, Synapse is like a one to two man situation. So well, that makes there, sense. There is no, yeah. Like, like the guys that you're talking to are like, I think there's like two employees, the owner and the, and then whoever else, like, I think it's just basically like a one to two man job. They do, they do everything. And that's why the, the quality is there because it's, it's on them. That's not like they have a team doing it. And it's like, those like, Oh, it's done. Okay. So that's why the quality is so good. And that's why sometimes it does take a little bit longer because they're literally working like two people on a release. Yeah. So well, look, I that's wanna, why, yeah. you know, I, I got to give them a lot of credit for, for sticking to their, like their ways of, of that, of just being like very hands on and stuff. But, um, I don't know what happens now. Do you do you say at this point when it's ready we announce, we release this thing no matter what month it is or do we at this point do we hold off till October? Like what do you think the I'm not sure where they're going to go. I kind of think like you need to release it ASAP. I don't think you need to wait, but who knows? At this point if they're like, "Oh, it's not going to be a release till June, we might as well wait till October." I think they're going to release it in August, September, probably September. That's my guess. Is good. that's my that's my safe guess of what month it's going to come out this year is September. Now, if something happens, it doesn't come out this year. Um, I think people are going to get really pissed off. It has to come out this year. I'm thinking like I'm even in my head thinking it that we might hear about it in May. But I mean, because it seemed like it was that close to be complete. Um, now, I don't know the processes of like once, you know do they do all the stuff and then do all the artwork and stuff or is it all being done and they're just waiting for like one more thing to, to put on that disc? I, I don't know how it works, but I'm hoping that at this point, if it was supposed to be October, then they said December and now it's kind of MIA. You would think that it's gotta be somewhat close. You would think I mean, that's a big, yeah. that's a big wait. Yeah. I hope, I hope it, uh, we get some news soon. Or just an update. I, I think people well, that's the appreciate thing too. The I updates. think that's what we need most is that there's gonna be there should be some kind of grand update on this. Yeah. Well, I'll bug I'll bug Dead Pit about it because they're friends <laughs> they, with they, the owner. They do. They try, but I they either got an answer that they swore they wouldn't say, or they got nothing. Oh well, they're, they're no good. Because if because if they got something that they were allowed to say, they would have already said it. Yeah. So. Uh, but listen, I had a great time recollecting the three trick or treat movies, guys. So if, with Scream Factory, you know, watch they're going to do a 4K announcement of this soon. Um, but yeah, the big, the big, the big hero of this video, I think, is trick or treats because I think people need to give this a shot, pick it up. It's a classic image. I mean, just really cool. Mm -hmm. If you put that next to uh, Chopping Mall, you'll see the similarities. And this came out before Chopping Mall. Mm -hmm. So you got to give the originality factor to Trick or Treats. And, uh, yeah, just really talking about the Trick or Treat because, you know, it's uh, like I said, I think this movie should be super popular and you should be getting, 
there, there should probably be Sammy Kerr NECAs and stuff like that already because it's such an iconic character and the movie is so synonymous with 80s horror but everything about it the music the look it's and it, it's like it's it's so condensed to what is uber popular in the horror world today it's just sho- it's shocking to me that it's it's the horror fans know about it but it's just like you know, you get the trick or treat shirts sometimes from like gutter garbs or right. yeah, 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 yeah. Rex, I have I have a bunch it. of trick or treat shirts, and it's funny because again, it, people love it, but I don't think there's that many people that still have seen it because it's so like out there that that it's not available. So that's what's wild is you're getting some merch from some of these companies like Fright Rags and stuff, but I'm surprised that you do all things considered. You know, I don't know how well that does outside of the really hardcore. Yeah, I mean, it, it, and I, when you look at the movie, it is it is a perfect storm. I don't think Ozzy or Gene could have any say in making it not come out because they're just they're contact, contracted actors in it. But you got a band doing the soundtrack for it on a record label, and it's like okay, you got that going on. Then you've got it from a product like we're looking at Larimar Home Video. Well, who the I mean, Return of Living Dead Two, Garrett. There's no Blu-ray for that overseas. Hmm. Like I, I have, I have UK fans that reach out to me and they're like, dude, you're lucky. You got screen factory did return of living dead too. We don't have that. I'm that's like, really? You know, yeah, we want it. I was like, oh, that's weird. So they got to import, they got to import return of living dead too. Hmm. You know? So it's, 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 it's weird. It's, it's a perfect storm when you look at it. It's just a shame because, and honestly, it's like, I don't even want to know the legal processes of trying to get this movie to come out. Cause it's probably a pain in the ass. I, I really, you know, I'm sure it's probably a huge pain in the ass. All things considered, I mean, I'm I'm thinking most of these companies have probably already tried to do this for a while. Oh yeah, I'm and sure. there was there was something holding it back that they were <clears throat> able to kind of finagle. Now I'm just I'm just hoping that there isn't some kind of snap food that they found in the process where it's like shit. You know, this is why it's not able to come out. I mean, th- that I don't I almost hundred percent don't think is the reason, but it would just sucked to, if it was because i mean even something like fright night 2 that was very close to get released and it still then then it had to get shut down so i don't know what it is that's really holding things like that back i mean it was to a point where tom holland was signing he was signing fright night steel books that were going inside a fright night 2 box set he posted a picture of him doing it and that whole thing got scrapped and he already had signed them and sent them off to put in the box so this is the cinema, cinema museum. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's funny. Cause like, I just remember somebody asked me about that a while back. Like, Hey, what's the update on that? And I was like, you know what? Let me, let me go look into it. Mm. And I couldn't find a formal answer, but I just started reading. It had to have gotten canceled. It had to have gotten canceled. Mm. Did they ever openly talk about that? Not that I, I think they did say it was canceled, but I don't know why. And, and like I said, the thing that was crazy, it was supposed to be a two box set. Fright Night 1 and 2, both steelbooks inside a set together. And Tom Holland had a, <laughs> had to a picture. You can probably even find it on his IG if you search really hard for it. Yeah, it, He would write Tom Holland, and then he would, underneath his name, he'd put CM with a circle to like let you know it was the Cine Museum. Oh, it's so fun. they were... They were, they were, he was, he was all in on it, so I don't know. That is bizarre, man. Because people were talking about, well, did they not find they probably that they didn't find the master, they didn't find the, the negative for Fright Night too. And I was like, no, the, I, odds are they were probably going to use like a television broadcast master of the film anyway. Because a lot of a lot of companies do that. And a lot of bootleg people, bootleg releases I have actually look better than the DVD releases because they use the television broadcast of it. Because sometimes they are like a lot better than what mm-hmm. was put on DVD, like uh, you know. So I, I'm, I was for sure what they were going to do is probably just use a television broadcast of Fright Night 2 and master that. It was probably going to look pretty damn good. Um, but that's really a shame. That really mm-hmm. is a shame. And, you know, that's still the biggest. I think that's still the biggest white whale of horror movies to come out on physical media. So uh, I think it's the brothers, the brother situation. But. You know, because there's a similar situation. There's a band called Badlands where the singer got AIDS and was having sex with women and didn't tell them about any of it. And so the family, they try to bury the record. Jakey Lee, the guitarist for Ozzy, was on that record. And they, the family just buries the record. They don't want people buying an album where the singer committed 
crime. That's le that's legitimately committing a crime doing that crap. So I don't know if there's a family dynamic going on with this as well. But then again, I don't know because I think that family produced a lot of movies that are out. So maybe it's not that. Who knows? The problem is we can't get any goddamn answers. Cinema Museum also probably didn't come out and say, "Hey guys, this is what happened." Mm -hmm. You know, it's just a shame. I, yeah, it is unfortunately. You know, but anyway, guys, listen, I just hope this gets you guys excited. I always get a little bit of a Halloween wind in me early. I get it right about now when we're knocking on spring. We're not there yet, but we're knocking on. Maybe we are in spring. I don't know. We're knocking on it. I get a little Halloween wind in me. And then uh, I like to watch movies that have kind of like a Halloween theme. So this was a perfect timing for me. Garrett, I appreciate you hopping on, man. And uh really really just spotlighting these movies and talking about because i think people like the conversation they like talking about oh mm -hmm. this, this is getting ready to come out hell yeah and i think there's going to be a lot of excitement with trick or treat and i think it's gonna be one of it could be synapse's biggest seller they ever have i think so for sure it's it's a uh, it's one of like you said with fright night being a white whale this ain't too far behind this was always one that everybody brings up on things that need upgrades because you only had that limited blu-ray from from germany and like you said it, it's it still wasn't perfect and it kind of was pretty limited at least the 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 hard boxes that i was looking at back in the day but yeah this is something we've wanted for a long time and knowing synapse they're going to put everything they can into the way it looks and knowing slippy that he's going to put everything he can as far as features so this is really going to be the, the most iconic edition once we get it yeah i'm super excited let's end it like this let's end the show like this garrett in the event Fright Night 2 does come out. I just want you to tell me, in your opinion, what label, boutique label, or just label in general, who's going to put it out, in your opinion? I got to guess. I mean... I got I to gotta, I gotta strong guess. If it's in the U.S., I'm thinking it's going to be Lionsgate or Vestron probably that's going to do it. But I feel like I'd almost be a little disappointed if it was a Vestron title. Like I think it needs more than that. Um, I mean, I would love to see second sight do it, but I, I, if we're talking overseas, you do, do America and overseas, how about overseas, that? second sight, um, America, oh, shit, man. I, I don't know. I, I, I I don't know if anybody can get their hands on it except for maybe I think Lionsgate was the last to have it. So I don't think they'd ever let that go. So I, I don't know. Um, I would say, let's just say fucking Vestron. I think so. I, I agree with second sight. Don't ask me how my gut is telling me somehow, some way scream factory is going to get it. Cause that, <sighs> I, mean, I think, I think that there's something going on with the, with the rights of this movie, because there are a number of Lionsgate titles that were subsidiaries of stuff like United Artists and Trimark Pictures that they are lost. And Vestron, it, it, it looks like the funnel is Lionsgate for these movies. Like everything mm -hmm. funnels into Lionsgate because this company goes out, then it gets absorbed by this company, which then turn in. Like, well, who look, took art? Was it Artisan that did that one? Who Artisan is it? Artisan is Lionsgate. Yeah, but was that that was that was the the, the DVD, DVD right? Yes, mm -hmm. and there's but for some reason, if it, it the, because there's other properties that are lost, another art like art. One of the biggest artisans was Rumpel Stiltskin. Mm -hmm. Home run idea to put out from from Lionsgate or Vestron. It hasn't happened. Something is going on with some of these subsidiaries that got funneled in Lionsgate. And I think somehow, some way, when the dust settles, Scream Factory is going to get it. I really do. I mean, that would be huge for them. They might, they need it. Because, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you know, they came out, when they announced the, the, the Night of the Demons, man, that came out of nowhere. And it, it, it I think it took a lot of us by surprise. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So true that. Anyway, guys, thank you for watching this. Let me know your favorite trick or treat movie with an apostrophe s or an apostrophe or without the apostrophe whatever whichever one's your favorite let me know and like i said guys those are the physical media releases the best ones you can get there are more for obviously trick or treat but if you're going to get any bro get the scream factory release it's the it's the best one and avoid the german this there's also a bootleg <laughs> on ebay you can get but i can't vouch for it although i saw a lot of people say it was actually a really well done american bootleg where they actually used elements original elements of the film i don't know if it was an interpositor or stuff if you go on ebay and look up trick-or-treat blu-ray 
there's a listing that has all these details about what they use for it and everything. And I hear it's actually pretty good, but I would just hang tight. I would hang tight because I think 2024 is the year. So thank you guys for watching this. Of course, check out Garrett's channel at Born to Be Rad on YouTube and all his social media accounts. Just look up Born to Be Rad and you'll find it there. Thank you guys for watching this video and we'll see you guys next time. Huge giant thank you to all of my Patreon supporters. Without you guys, this would not be possible. To get behind the scenes photos, videos, music, private live streams, and much more, you can subscribe to my Patreon for as little as a dollar a month. Thank you to my patrons.